pleasure to be here in Lund and uh, present uh, Cantarga. And uh, it's, uh, when you have an annual event like this, it's always nice to reflect: Have we had a good year or not? And I, I have my personal view is that we had a very good year at Cantarga. So it's a pleasure to give you this update. So. For, for those of you who don't know Cantarga, what, what we're completely focusing on is to develop antibody therapies. And uh, we have a unique niche in that we ha discovered a novel target called IL-1 RAP. And personally, I think the more I learn about IL-1 RAP, the more I see the opportunities and the more actually I love this <laughs> molecule. Because there, there is so much you can do here uh, when it comes to unmet medical needs. So, for instance, it, it's overexpressed in cancers, and it's, over, and it's also a great opportunity here in autoimmune inflammatory diseases, and, and we're trying to make profit out of both. And uh, in cancer, we treated almost 300 patients now, uh, and we start to see clear signals of activity in several difficult-to-treat cancers, both pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, and now lately TNBC, which is triple-negative breast cancer. So it looks really, really promising. And we also have an ongoing randomized trial in triple negative breast cancer, uh, where we hope to have results end of 2024. And we have a phase 2B trial in preparation in pancreatic cancer, also a very important uh, control trial. Uh, and in CAN10, we're in phase 1 clinical development, and the idea is to work towards uh, systemic sclerosis and myocarditis later on, and results continuously doing this trial to, to make sure that the market is updated. Uh, we're also in a good financial position. We have uh, 287 million Swedish on the bank right now, and even if we have uh, ambitious programs in front of us, it will take us until end of 2024. And we also have very strong owners uh, in several Swedish institutional investors backing us. So if you look at the pipeline, you can see that uh, it's uh, pancreatic cancer, triple negative breast cancer on, on uh, phase two development, and lung cancer. We recently completed recruitment and are going to present results uh, once they mature, CAN10 uh, in phase one. But you can also see that we have emerging projects here. So, so once these late stage uh, assets evolve and get partnered, we will also be enab able to finance new opportunities here. So very interesting future for the company. And, and very quickly go through the clinical results. And uh, in pancreatic cancer, we treat patients in first line. So unfortunately, most patients are diagnosed with a metastatic disease and a very poor prognosis uh, with an expected survival of I don't know, eight, nine, perhaps 10 months in different trials when you treat with chemotherapy. Uh, we, we treated more than 70 patients. We see much longer survival, 13.2 months. We can also see, if you look here, that lots of patients have very deep responses, which means that they have a very good tumor shrinkage, which also uh, is uh, during a very long time. So, so a very good result. but. Even more excitingly is that, and is that we can see that the patients that ha have the highest levels of, of uh, our target are actually the ones driving the efficacy signal. So here we can see that patients with high IL-1 RAP have more than 14 months overall survival. You can see that here on the waterfall that they have the really deep, nice responses compared to the ones with low IL-1 RAP. And this is what you expect if you have some kind of robot which is getting into the tumor. Of course, the more target you have, the better the efficacy should be. Uh, what I don't have time to show is that if you don't treat these patients, you would expect the opposite. Uh, these patients with high IL-1 RAP are the ones with the worst prognosis. So if you want to make it very simple, you can say that you made the losers to become the winners with our therapy. So a very strong result and something we are definitely building on in the upcoming clinical trial, which has now been designed according to new FDA guidelines, where you need to study two different dose levels in a randomized trial to have full documentation of that. So we're going to study the two most promising dose levels, which are 80 and 200 milligram, 
in combination with standard chemotherapy for first line pancreatic cancer. And then the control group would be uh, patients getting chemo only. And we will also look subgroup of patients for high IL-1 RAP versus low IL-1 RAP to get these results once and for all in stone. And I think that will, with that type of result, we will be in a very, very strong position. Uh, we also have strong results in lung cancer, and I don't have time to go through all this in detail, but I'd like to point out that one finding, so we have very good response rates, we have good survival, but one thing which is striking here is that we have several patients with complete responses. This is extremely rare in non-small cell lung cancer. And this is obviously a very strong signal. So, so what we're trying to figure out now is exactly how to find these patients because it, it's a very competitive environment. And if, if we have good biomarkers to find these patients, we will obviously be in a very good position to have a discussion with potential pharma partners around this. And last week we presented new results in triple negative breast cancer, and the story is very similar here. We get good results, we get very deep responses, uh, much better than you would expect from chemotherapy alone when we do a chemotherapy combination. The progression-free survival, which is how long time does it take for cancer to start growing again, is longer than you expect from chemotherapy alone. Survival is it's still very early. Most patients are still, still alive, but the signal is here. It really is a clear trend that we're prolonging survival. And here we are in a fortunate position that the phase two randomized is already ongoing and recruiting well. And uh, hopefully recruitment can stay really good. So obviously that once we have results in this trial, we will go out and communicate the top line results as quickly as possible. So, so to summarize very quickly, we have very exciting targets. We have a very exciting mechanism of action here. And we see effects in three different cancer forms now uh, that have, let's say, certain criteria in common. They, they are driven by specific biology and they have lots of IL-1 wrap. So we really st start to carve out a niche here where we can deliver value to patients and hopefully to shareholders. So then uh, our second project, uh, very quickly, uh, CAN-10, it's also binding IL-1 wrap, but it's doing it in a very unique way. So if we look at the nadunolumab, it's primarily blocking the IL-1 signal. Here we are actually blocking three different signals, IL-1, IL-33, and IL-36, which are all driving different diseases. Uh, so IL-33 is, for instance, involved in asthma, IL-36 in various skin diseases like psoriasis, and IL-1 is almost always involved in inflammatory diseases. So, and very often they work together. So here we really have something very unique to, to test in patients with very serious diseases like systemic sclerosis and myocarditis. But we also see effects in animal models for psoriasis uh, and, and uh, atherosclerosis and several other very difficult diseases. So the status right now in, in the CAN-10 program is that we've done everything to, to be in phase one. The phase one is ongoing in Germany right now. Uh, it's divided into two parts. So the first part is that we need to do increasing studies of uh, single doses, ongoing according to plan, and, and once we reach a little bit longer, we will communicate the data. And uh, the second part, which is important, is that it will be done in psoriasis patients, and, and then we will also communicate efficacy in biomarkers. So, milestones, we have lots of interesting milestones in pancreatic cancer, with new trials starting 24, data 25. We have uh, lung cancer data to, to be communicated. Uh, the trial stopped earlier this year and we should be able to present more. Triple negative breast cancer is a similar story. The randomized trial is ongoing, CAN-10, phase one ongoing. And we also have several other studies uh, which we have not communicated results from. So from an investment perspective, it's, we will have a very exciting late 23 and 24. 
And by that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I have this summary slide here to inspire everyone to ask questions. So thank you. Thank you. And I think you have inspired people because we have a couple of questions here. Um, first question is, if you could summarize a little bit the difference between CAN04 and CAN10. Yes. So uh, CAN04 is designed to, to kill cancer cells. So it's, it's finding IL-1 wrap and then the tail of this antibody is designed to attract immune cells to get into the tumor and kill IL-1 wrap containing cells and it's also blocking interleukin-1 signaling. CAN10 is, uh, have not this feature of uh, attracting immune cells. It's only blocking IL-1, IL-33 and IL-36. Are you looking at further possible indications or you're happy with the ones that you have? For I guess that's a question for both the candidates. I, I, I think, uh, look, I think there is an opportunity in lots of indications, uh, much more than we're doing, but I think we reach a stage now where we see signals and we really need to focus on delivering results in those uh, diseases instead of going everywhere. Uh, how is the work going to find biomarkers for the patients with the best outcomes? So uh, it's a so it's an ongoing research and I guess what you saw in pancreatic cancer with... So in pancreatic cancer it's relatively easy task in front of us. We, we have patients with pancreatic cancer, they are always diagnosed through a biopsy. So we will have a biopsy from these patients and can measure IL-1 RAP, which is one obviously very strong biomarker. Uh, but we're also trying to see if we can adapt this to, to let's say, more blood tests in both pancreatic cancer as well as lung cancer and triple negative can breast cancer. So we're making progress, but obviously it's very ambitious projects as well. So, yeah, with promising results in three cancer forms and big potential, do you have interest from potential partners yet? Are you in discussions? So, so, so what I can say is that m my job is to make sure that we have contacts with all uh, potential partners, uh, and we do have potential partners who, who are definitely following us. And then uh, I, I think if we talk from a more general perspective, I think the sweet spot for, for a partnership is on the back of randomized data. I think that's where you can really, let's say, get the, 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 the premium deals, if, if you call it like that. Uh, but everything is possible ahead of that. So uh, I cannot comment exactly on where we are in, in the various partnering discussions. There's also a question about competitors, like what are your main competitors and how would you position yourself in the, on the competitive landscape? So if, if we start with pancreatic cancer, I think f from a more patient perspective, the competition is very limited. It's, it's actually very sad. <laughs> Uh, if you look at non-small cell lung cancer, the competition is immense. It's, it's hundreds of different trials and, and compounds out there. And I think just approved drugs, it's 20 or 30 approved drugs in lung cancer. So there's no way you can, you can try to think that you can get all patients. You need to be very clever and find your niche if you want to be competitive. And that's what we're trying to do with biomarkers and have something which is superior to everything else. Yeah, so these are obviously huge markets, like you say. How, how big a size of the market are you aiming for? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I, think, I, I think there are drugs that are even targeting, let's say, 1% of the lung cancer market that are doing fantastically well. So I don't think you have to be afraid. If you just have a good test of finding 1% of the patients and know that you're getting a superior result, that could be a tremendous market. Thank you so much, Jaron. Thank you.